That's dope. That's dope. What's up, everybody? It is Friday, June 11th at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, one half hour later than usual, which means that some of you are probably having your Friday night. Today's stream will probably be a little shorter than usual because it's the freaking weekend, baby, about to have me some fun. It's Friday. And we know the weekends have been absolutely brutal for the markets of late. So, uh, you know, I didn't do a news video or anything today. I'm trying to, I didn't pull up anything, but big news today seems to be that uh, in a shocking development a bunch of unvaccinated people with no masks who crowded into a small room of 13,000 people got COVID. Yeah, Miami Bitcoin conference now, uh, not surprisingly, is apparently international news. I saw it on CNBC and Bloomberg that a bunch of people got COVID. And I can tell you I'm vaccinated. I was there and maybe 5,000 people should have been in Mana Winwood. There are about 12 or 13,000 people and like, you could feel like COVID part. You could, it was so thick. You could probably see COVID particles flying past you. I probably have like COVID still stuck to my elbow right now, but I feel good as I sniff. <laughs> but generally, yeah, uh, but generally. So that was kind of the big news. Uh, somebody bought a condo in Miami for $22.5 million with crypto. Bet it was BitConnect. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's big news. Biggest real estate sale, I believe ever. Obviously the other big news, El Salvador and, uh, mining volcanoes. That's awesome. And then Elizabeth Warren be, being horrible at life and flying around under little private jets, t- 10 times the fossil fuel, fuel consumption, of uh, flying commercial and railing about Bitcoin like a crazy old person. I don't understand why we allow any politician over the age of like 55 to exist out to pasture. I love that generation. Love my parents. Hi, mom and dad. Just had lunch with my dad. It was great. But most people who are in their 70s and 80s and and such probably should just go uh, do shuffleboard and bocce ball if you can do it and maybe leave the... um, leading of the world to people who are younger and actually care. Someone just asked me, I'm, no, I'm not high. I'm just, I'm just a dude. This is my natural, I sniff Afrin when I have a cold. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, whatever, man, Elizabeth Warren. I don't know. What's the other big news? Anything else going on you guys want to, uh, want to talk about? Because, uh, yeah, out to pasture, out to pasture, out to pasture. Go, like, enjoy your life. Have a vacation. But do it over there. Do it over there. Not over here, man. Because I'm sick of it. And we all know that a central bank digital currency is coming and they just want Bitcoin out of the way. My feeling about it is that, you know, they figured like if they ignored it long enough, it would go away. And then all of a sudden Bitcoin went to like $65,000. And they're like, "Mm, yes, we can't can't do that now. We got to actually pay attention to it. And here we are. Um. Your link bag is evaporating if that is news. All altcoin bags are evaporating. I've been talking about this for a couple of days. It sucks. Listen, like, you know, I put out a newsletter and part of that newsletter, most of it's news, uh, not ironically. Uh, A lot of it is educational content, but a lot of it, you know, I chart Bitcoin every single day. I feel like I dream and think in Bitcoin charts, but a lot of it is looking for, you know, setups, not signals, but setups for altcoins and stuff. And I just haven't been able to post jack shit fuck all for the last weeks. And it almost looked like they were doing okay. And now Bitcoin dominance is rocketing and all alt alt, uh, pairs against Bitcoin look like stir fried doo-doo beans, whatever those are. It's gross. It looks bad. And I just can't imagine wanting to trade them. But what, what do you think about Dogecoin? I think it's dying. Well, not going to be that dude because I've been wrong probably more than I've been right in my life. But God, if I didn't tell you that the top of Dogecoin was going to be the day Elon Musk was on Saturday Night Live. I mean, I made videos about it. I screamed about it. I said that Doge was like 70 times overvalued. So yes, I believe that Doge will eventually go way back down and we'll have another big cycle and it'll be super fun. Um, 
Oh, I'll answer some questions. We're here. Have you been happy financially when you were 30? No, I was a steaming butthole of financial disaster when I was 30. I was terrible at finances. I'm 44 now though, so it's fine. But no, I was I was I was horrid. It's horrid. Sorry, mom and dad, if you are listening again. I was bad. I was bad at money. Really bad. I finally got out of debt basically right when I was 30. I went on a tour in Japan in 2006. So yeah, I was 30. And I uh, got paid really well and got out of debt and started to like actually have a little bit of money. But I, I was I was terrible. I was horrible at it. I was horrible at it. Like at third, not even at 30, but like through the 30s, just powered right through those. Um, I was like, wow, you can't stop this suck train when it's sucking this hard. Now you're good with money. Yeah, I'm good with money. I think I'm good. Pretty good. Pr- pretty good. Um, pretty good at money. Uh, see, do you think it's the right time to buy alts? That depends entire. And this is why you can't give people signals or ideas. It depends entirely on you. If there's a coin that you love that you want to be holding in five years, I think now is a very good time to invest or to blindly dollar cost average into all coins while the price is somewhat depressed. If you're trying to trade it for like the next few weeks and you're going to get emotional and go cry in the corner like a little baby, if it goes down 30% from here, no, I wouldn't touch them because that could happen. That could happen. Tour in Japan doing what? Uh, What seemingly a lot of people don't know is that I was a DJ and music producer for 20 years before this. That's how I got the blue check. That's why it's my face and whatever. When I switched into crypto, I was just a dude who had been a DJ but yeah, I was in the band of a DJ of a uh, singer named Toshinobu Kubota. He was kind of like the Michael Jackson of Japan, and I was the DJ and percussionist in his band. Um, Claudia would like you to know that I have a contagious smile. It is unique. Thank you. That's very nice. The check is in the mail for the compliment. Um, but I'm glad that it's only my smile is that's contagious and not the COVID that was like polluting my ear holes the entire time that uh, we were in Miami. Um, new subscriber, saw you on banter. Guys, crypto banter, ran Nooner's thing. Like I went on there maybe two months ago or something. It was new and it was like 300 people were watching. I was like, dude, you're killing it. New show, 300 people. Yesterday it was like 11,000 people. And he was like, man, I'm kind of disappointed at the low traffic. My God, what? Uh, my kids have run in the room in the past. My, when I was doing a podcast once, my son ran in butt naked, but I locked the door. And um, my kid, children um, apparently still can't deal with that. Death cross. Death cross. Let's talk about the death cross. One second. I'm going to pull up some charts. Let's do Bitcoin stuff. You guys want to do some Bitcoin stuff so that you don't have to hear me use bad words and talk about naked kids? Seems like a good idea. One second. I share the screen. Um, so let's go look at death crosses. Let's go look at death crosses. Okay. Let's talk about, talk about this again. First of all, there's no death cross yet. This could easily turn, but the death cross people seem to be talking about is the daily chart, 50 MA crossing the 200. First of all, MAs are kind of stupid. EMAs are better. Let me see if I have an EMA template. EMAs are better. You see the 21, which nobody cares about, has already crossed the 200. The 50 is actually closer to crossing the 200 if you use EMAs. MAs are the moving average of the previous certain number of candles based on whatever your setting is. So the 50 is the average price of the last 50 candles, in this case, days. Since we're on the daily chart, if you switch to the four hour, it's the last 54 hour candles. 200 is the red one here. It's the last 200 as you get. So generally to be bullish, you want your shorter term moving averages to be trading or to be moving above your longer term moving averages. When one crosses down the other, when the short one goes below, it's a death cross. When the short one is above, crosses above, it would be a golden cross, not to be confused with a golden shower. They're different. They're different. Death cross would be when this crosses down. But since we, and the reason I like EMAs better, I don't use them because nobody looks at them. So you want to look at what everyone else looks at. Everyone's talking about this. So this is, you put it on your chart because everyone's talking about it. So you want to front run it and use their stupidity if possible. I'm not saying you're stupid for believing in it, right? 
Um, I just your comments still up there, huh? So yeah, let me see. So this is all happening. This is dropping because of this. It's not foretelling a drop. MAs are inherently, intrinsically, by their nature, lagging indicators because they're based on what happened before. They're not predicting anything that's happening in the future. This already happened. If this death cross happens, it will be because of what happened before and not what is happening, going to happen. Now, if price goes right up here, let's say, and this crosses with both MAs acting as resistance, a line does not act as resistance, but if it's in that area, then it would be more compelling. When the two cross and they're right on price, up or down, that's more compelling. But to me, this is not something to worry about even a little bit. And the reason the MAs are better is because they're exponential moving averages, meaning that they average the more recent candles more heavily than the older candles, because who really gives two shits what happened 200 days ago on Bitcoin to make this 200 MA? 200 days ago on Bitcoin is like 200 years in any other place, right? I mean, crypto time passes like at least 50 times faster than time in the real world. So death cross is not of any major concern to me. Let me see if I get what charts we got here. Oh, I pulled up some like random, randomy stuffs um, for fun. Wanted to look at the cloud. I haven't looked at a Nichi Moku cloud chart in ages. Uh, this used to be one of my banter. It was wet dreams. Today it's golden showers. I see a theme here. No, no themes. The theme is charts. Charts, just charts. Okay. Ichimoku Cloud used to be my favorite indicator. Used to trade with it all the time. Have not pulled it up on Bitcoin in forever. I'm sorry, I'm going to drink this lukewarm coffee. So, blue line, Tenken, Tenken. Brown line, Kijun. Cloud, twisted from red to green here. Now we have a very thin green cloud. All the Tenkin and the Kijun are both trading above the cloud, which is generally considered bullish. You can see that the last TK cross, bullish TK cross, was right here around $8,872. That is a golden cross. These are much shorter moving averages. And we have seen the Tenkin continue to trade above. As you can see, which I did not know until this moment, the Kijun was lost as support on the weekly. That's bad if you're an Ichimoku trader. But if it closes above it, that would actually look like this is holding a support and you would expect to head back up here at least to retest the Tenken. And we do not see either of them curving down on the weekly, which is good. You want them to be heading up, trending up. The cloud is not in play at all. It would take weeks to arrive at the crowd. So cloud, the crowd. Not ironically, it's a Japanese indicator and I just called a cloud a crowd. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Um, and so, I mean, to test the cloud is very unlikely anytime soon, trading squarely above it. Let's look at the uh, daily. Not as good. Not great. Okay, so what's interesting is we had a death cross at 56,000 after the highs, right? The Tenkin crossed down the Kijun. See that? See how long it was trading above it? All the way from October of 20, around 10,000, 11,000. That's when it broke through the cloud and you had a bullish cross. And when you have a bullish cross above the cloud, golden cross of those, a bullish TK cross, that is a sign to open longs. If it's below the cl cloud, it's actually a sign to close shorts, but not necessarily to get long until you're above the cloud. But so here we broke above a uh, green cloud. It's bullish and had a cross. This is your signal to go long. And your signal to close that long would have been here. Above the cloud, a bearish cross is not saying go short. It's saying close your long. So that would have taken you from like 11 to 55 if you were trading the cloud. What you don't love is this single candle right here broke both of those lines and into the cloud and the cloud broke as support and was retested as resistance on the very day that price 
dumped all the way down to 30,000. Pretty compelling, actually, looking at the cloud in this context. Uh, but now, price on yesterday, two days ago, is nice candle. It's now trying to flip the Tenkin back to support. The Kijun is still flat. That's strong resistance, but that's all the way up at 47,000. Um, and we do not at least have the Kijun heading down for now. If it's coming down, it's going to act as pressure to push down. The cloud has twisted red. That's a bearish signal. But the thinner the cloud, the easier to push through. So if the daily, I mean, let's say this is June 18th, in a week, if a week it can get up, you know, 46, this would be a very easy place to cross the cloud all the way even through June 30th. Then it's starting to thicken and we'll start to have to worry. But this is called, uh, <clears throat> this is a Kumo cross. The, the, the cloud is called Kumo, Kumo twist. So it's twisting from green bullish to bearish. But when that happens, the twist is a very good place to cross through. You can see that how thin the cloud was when this crossed here, right? So holding the tank in, flipping this is the first step, right? We want to see that cross up the Kijun eventually, and we want to get above the cloud. Let's look at the four hour. Okay, this is more interesting. I bet the six hour looks the same. The six hour has a thick cloud, but we've entered and holding the, the Kumo bottom as support. That should technically take us to 44,756. You should go end to end through the cloud once you're in it. We had a death cross here. Price came down, as you can see, but it looks like we could get a bullish cross if price continues up. Should be a bullish cross under the cloud and would target right here. Now, a flat Kumo top like this is considered very, very strong resistance. So you'd be surprised to see it fly through. You can see how thin the cloud has been on the six hour and easy to pass through. This is going to be harder. But when you get into the cloud and hold it as support, as this has, which is very interesting, this looks really good, you should be heading to the top. Four hour also looks like it could get that cross. Cloud is thin, but yeah, holding the cloud, we should be able to get through this relatively easily, even with a move just to like 37. I mean, if we just, this could go sideways through the cloud and head up. So hey, that's a very brief look at the Ichimoku cloud for anyone who cares. For anyone who possibly cares. I, I, this is the first time I'm looking at your comments, so sorry. Um. <clears throat> I'm stuck up a little. Sorry. Sorry. Um, you guys are just over here talking about Cardano and stuff. Uh, no idea what's going on. Missed a lot. Um, I, I basically, at this point, I well, where, where was the question? I, I'm just looking at Ichimoku now because I thought it'd be good educationally, and I haven't looked at it in a long time. I also, also pulled up TD Sequential because we do have a TD9. TD sequential at the very basic level, you have up to a 13 candle count. You can see this nine completely failed, by the way, should have been a short signal. Oops. So it's not like, and this one too, should have been a short signal. Oops. Didn't really work. Should have been a short signal. Oops. So TD nine cells on the weekly have been weak as fludge. Even this TD nine, you know, like I said, it can be a 13 candle sequence. If you had shorted here, you would have shorted 11,337 when price went to 20K. Yes, it, it eventually reversed, but uh, not where you want to be. But this nine on the low, not a perfect nine, though. You want your candle, your nine should close lower than at least two candles before, some say four. So you'd want it. That's imperfect. But you don't see many of these on the weekly either way. And we do have a potential TD9. So you would actually, if you're, if you want to trade this, you'd want it to close like below 34,000 below these candles up here. It's not ideal, but uh, interesting to see. We do have a TD9 theoretical buy signal on the weekly, which is very, very rare on the Bitcoin chart. I don't know what the daily looks like. See, if you would bought this nine, you would have fun staying poor. I don't love this indicator, to be honest, but uh, people are talking about it. So there's a sell. That was a pretty good sell on that nine. Um, yeah, I don't know what the four hour looks like. Choppy. Chop, chop. That was a pretty good sell signal at 38 that you could have traded down to like 30. But uh, yeah, TD9 on the weekly, worth watching. And uh, you can see that um, we already have more volume than last week. Probably because everyone was in Miami um, throwing COVID at each other. They actually had a COVID fight. You took your breath and you threw it at people's faces. Super spreader. Just what 
crypto needed was to be called super spreaders. Um, so yeah, I'm going to close that. I don't care anymore. Uh, hope you learned something from my cloud exercise. Let's just look at the charts though. Right now, I mean, listen, this was the pennant, right? This was the pennant that uh, I was wrong about, I guess. Um, thought, you know, this was Elon Musk's uh, breakup tweet while we were all in Miami. What a dick. Literally last Thursday, everyone was like, whale day, bro. We're pumping Miami pump. Oh, in the end, it doesn't really matter. Nice reversal here. Beautiful bullish engulfing candle of all of this. And now we seem to have some consolidation. Doesn't look bad. So listen, if you stuck to those same lines, you're testing both of these lines as support here. That's pretty nice. But you probably want to do this now to be safe. You know, say, hey, got to get above this. Really got to get above 42K. So much resistance. But uh, nothing looks like, just looks like sideways chop. But like, you know, when you have a strong volume sell-off and consolidation on diminishing volume, that's bearish consolidation in this case until you break something up otherwise. So nothing to get excited about to me until we're above 42. Because above 42, that was the whole move from 20. Uh, Elon Musk uh, got rid of Bitcoin in his bio here, making a perfect bull flag, if I recall correctly. I do, because like I said, I dream in the Bitcoin chart. This was when he uh, tweeted, uh, when he added Bitcoin was when we got all the way up to like 40. And then he got rid of Bitcoin cash tag, hashtag, cash tag, and then uh, broke out and Tesla bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, erased everything that he had done for us and right back to the same range. <sighs> How lame. But uh, so, yeah, and this, again, was uh, Elon Musk right here, if you give him that much credit, which I don't necessarily do. Uh, looking at MACD, where's my MACD, bro? Mm, let's see. Um, had a bullish MACD cross, same thing, shorter moving MA over larger. The histogram, that's this thing in the middle, has gone bullish and moving up, and there's a slight bullish divergence right here. So if you're a MACD guy, this looks super sweet right now. Super freaking sweet. Uh, for the RSI people, not the best news, but not the worst news. Another hidden bearish divergence, but this is not really that confirmed to me. You want to see like a definitive elbow down. So if this can cross, we got to get above 39,219, basically on price to invalidate that a higher high here. Sad because we've had these beautiful bull divs and every single one has been followed by a hidden bearish divergence. Just shows a shite ton of indecision and ultimately here we are on the four hour chart this was such a clear beautiful bottom on that little bullish sfp below this swing i thought maybe we'd come to 30 but hey when everyone's saying we're going to go to 30 what do you get 31 you get front run uh but flip the eq of the range so as long as we're in the top half of this range above this dash line you should theoretically be heading to the top forty-two thousand test so a lot of mixed, basically, I'm just trying to analyze a whole bunch of trashy sideways chop at the moment, but that's what we got. Um, Scott, where can I get a hold of one of the songs? I think it was a mix of Maneater. It's um, on my YouTube. It's there. Clan Eater, you could just Google Melker Clan Eater. Uh, RSI trend line breakout on the daily trend line starting April 14th. Let's look at that. Sorry, let me open that again. And oh, by the way, to all credit, Michael, I think you're the one who told me about the TD9. I think you showed it to me on Twitter, which is when I uh, looked at it. So you said going back to April, let me see, April 14th. Daily? Daily. From here? Accurate. And a retest, assuming that's what you're talking about. And that's pretty nice. One, two, three. That's nice. That's nice. When you see a breakout of something like that, nice call. Man, you are on it today. Michael, killing it. Uh, when you see a break of a trend line on an indicator like RSI, it tends to lead the break on price. So that, to me, is a pretty bullish signal. Nice catch, dude. 
Uh, I'm not stuck up. I was talking about Rand. Rand's cool, man. I met him in Miami. We hung out uh, backstage. He's the nicest. Like, he's just the nicest person. It's just the nicest person. Like, such a nice guy. So cool. So nice. Michael's on the money. Drop us your Twitter. Do it, Michael. What's your Twitter? What's your Twitter? They're all going to follow you right now for your amazing analysis. Okay, I have the top 10 like ish coins pulled up. ETH, BNB, ADA. We can look quickly, but I tell you, they all look like trash. ETH, though, is at support. And we were like just up here the other day when I did a video and I said, uh, look for a move down to 0.065. And it's holding there. So maybe uh, we have a little alt weekend if this can bounce from here. Maybe, because this is pretty wrecked. You know, and if Bitcoin just chops sideways to the weekend, we could see a little appreciation from alts. Not much to see on, on ETH, honestly. That'll give you an idea of why that's there. Breakout was nice, but what a epic fail. So maybe right in here we find some support. Could be, could be all right. I like that. I like that. I'm not buying it. Just telling you. I mean, this is steep, dude. This isn't like a this isn't like a consolidation drop. Like this is like a consolidation drop, you know. Um, here, you know, like kind of. Eh, this is just like this is a slide. This is like a water slide, you know. Really steep. Wee. Uh, it's holding support for now, though. Point oh six five oh four seven. If it closes four hours, even daily above that, maybe we get some relief this weekend. That'd be sweet. ETH USD wants to break support. I wouldn't trade ETH USD unless it breaks this line. Uh, next by market cap BNB. Well, this was nice. I mean, that was a good trade, and now it's back below resistance. I don't like this line much at this point. Um, that's also a key level, actually. I just hate drawing lines this close to each other, but that's nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a tough spot. It doesn't really have any form. looks like a diamond bottom, actually, which could uh, be a pretty good signal. Have something like this. That's what you would expect from a diamond pattern like that. It's not the clear, cleanest diamond pattern, but it is a reversal pattern technically. It would be more like this if you want to draw it accurately. Uh, I'm not doing it. Sorry. It's just not looking good because I'm not using trend lines. I'm using a marker. And I'm, uh, I mean, for drawing drawings, I am worse than my six year old. I cannot even draw like stick figures. Um, uh, Bitcoin maxis are starting to get annoying. They need to realize it would benefit Bitcoin more to not shit on everything else. They're not going to realize it. There's maximalists in every part of the world and we need them. We need the Bitcoin, Bitcoin maximalists to push the agenda. But if you're in Miami, I mean, you kind of probably like wanted to like out loud talk about ETH for like five minutes and you weren't even allowed, right? So that was weird. BNB, USD, I don't know, man, nothing to see here. Lost the range. These all look crappy, really. Oh, that's not my ADA chart. I mean, that's an old ADA chart that I've been used to do using. And these look crap, right? We needed to break these levels. This is what I was saying. I wouldn't enter unless it got above these, and it's kind of still the same. Really hard to look at these, man. Hard to look at these. That was a descending triangle. Tested, retested as resistance. I don't know, man. Let's call it, let's say that. that. If it breaks that, you think about it. Sorry to go through these fast, but there's like nothing to see. Doge, that this isn't old. That's not the right time frame. I mean, these just look like crap, dude. Maybe, maybe alts look kind of so bad. Like I said, I mean, ETH, whatever, that could, whatever. But maybe alts look so bad that it's going to be a good weekend. Anyone? Is that a thing? Probably not. I mean, this broke support. This was a nice, this was a trade from the newsletter. That was a 50% move, hit the target to the penny, and then um, then dropped. It's like one of the five trades I've been able to put in there. But this was like the clearest top ever. I mean, here's RSI with the savage bearish divergence, right? 
And then at the bottom, dead bottom, you had bullish divergence. Right? Uh, I don't know, man. These don't look great. XRP. Pfft. Looks crappy. Everything's just dropping. XRP USD is fine. Still trading between these levels. Nothing. 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 I even posted this in the newsletter. I said, I wouldn't trade this under any circumstances, but you do technically have a breakout. Looks like crap. Uni, complete crap. Losing the top half of that ascending channel. I mean, these look like crap. There's no reason to even look at charts right now. Sorry. Sorry. They look like I can do the chain link chart. You guys have asked, but I, I hate to tell you, I don't even need to open it to say, mm, looks like shit. Oops. Opened it in the wrong thing. I'm going to go out on a crazy limb and say, in advance, looks real shitty. Looks terrible. Coming into support, though. So maybe you uh, get a bounce there. I mean, garbage. Look at how aggressive these sell-offs are right now. I don't even know if that line is relevant. Let's look at the daily. That is a huge supply zone right there. I mean, I would maybe buy this at like 16 bucks here, 14 bucks. I'm not saying it's going there, but you know, if we come down and retest these lows, you know, listen, the way that this looks right now, I'm not saying it will happen, but the trade you would want is this thing, you know, where it fakes out below, comes back above and gets it, and you enter right here when it sweeps the low. Otherwise, you know, you do have some support here. Oop, not there. Here. Kinda. Although this kind of, uh, and then uh, if you're a pattern kind of guy or you like descending resistance, I would say you got to get through this line. If you break that, you could head back up. But right now, man, I mean, what does dominance look like? Is it just pumping? But yeah, I mean, no. And listen, you're not getting, like this was the, this was an epic alt season situation. Dropped into support. Just doesn't look good. It's not like good. Bitcoin looks fine though. Like ranging you, Ray, I would love to, we got to get above 39, then call me really 42. I don't know. Other than that, it's, uh, not, not, not the best time. Scott, do you think the bull market is over? I think that bull market is over. And I was one of the first who had the balls to like, be like, yeah, it's like the, when you drop 55%, you're kind of not in a bull market anymore. And it's sustained now for like a couple of weeks, right? So I don't think it's over. Like I think we're going to go, I, I think we're going to go way higher and not that long down the road, but like it's, it's semantics, bull bear market. I don't think we're going into a full blown bear market, but like we dropped like 55% and like small cap alts are down like 90% from their highs. That's not a bull market, right? It's a macro bull market. Zoom out on the monthly, huge bull market. Zoom in on the daily. We're looking to make a decision here. Um, I can't believe that Dennis Rodman is Satoshi. That's what I'm reading. Um, that's pretty crazy. Do you think we'll see alt season at all this year? Sure. There's alt seasons every year. We just had one. Most people have more, I think. Uh, I like RSI divergences. Neither one has more strength. There's no, guys, if there was any indicator that anyone could be like, that's the one, it works every time and it's stronger than the others, then we'd all be super rich. Everything we're doing is a complete and utter guess that gives you a reason to set a stop loss and manage your risk. That is it. Charts do not tell you the future. They give you a visual representation of what people are thinking so that you can try to counter trade the idiots. And usually it doesn't work because usually you find that you are in fact the idiot. Me, me, not just you, me, idiots. Oh, smash the like button. Someone said that. Yeah. Kev wants you guys to smash the likes. 
help a brother out. Um, trying to go through your questions here. Vet, listen, I'll look at another chart for you guys. I'm going to go, listen, I do have a crystal ball. It says this chart looks like shit. Let's look at it. Let's see. Let's look at it and see if my crystal ball is correct. I don't know which if this is the right chart. Yeah, that looks like shit. Look, it's just going down like every other alt. Aggressive sell-off. Shitty. Looks shitty. Super, super bad. Nothing wrong with that. Amazing project. Will trade higher than it is today at some point. But if we're looking at charts to trade, these look like dumpster fires. Like, not like, not like, oh, I'm going to go outside and light my little like kitchen garbage can. I'm talking about like industrial dumpster behind a nuclear power plant lighted on fire. Dumpster fire. Charts look terrible. Please tell about SHIB because I brought it and I can't sell now at a loss. First of all, you can sell at a loss. I'm not telling you to do th anything. I'm not giving you financial advice but you absolutely can sell at a loss. And just because a coin is down 50% does not mean it can't go down 50 more percent or 90% from that 50%. I'm not talking about SHIB or anything, but what I did say about SHIB every single time someone asked me about it was stay away because it's a literal joke. It's SHIB is a meme built onto a meme, right? Doge already was overblown and was a meme and has no actual like value to be where it is. I love Doge. But Doge is like a penny at the most value. And then they built SHIB to make fun of Doge. And they sent half of it to a random wallet of Vitalik Buterin's. And they said that the market cap was infinite and the potential supply was like 100 trillion, quadrillion. Memes are awesome, but it's a meme of a meme. It's memeception. You ever see that movie Inception where you don't know if you're in the dream or you're in the dream's dream or the dreamer is dreaming a dream that you might be in? Well, that's we have memes that are in memes. You have memes inside memes, right? And nobody wants that. 80% to 90% is a 50% drop, right? And then you can, from any given price, you can drop another 90%. Just like, you know, if you're like the, the old thing, if you're standing a foot away from a wall and you step halfway towards the wall, you can infinitely step halfway towards the wall without ever touching the wall, right? Right? because there's always another halfway that you can fill. So no matter what the price of something is, it can still drop. So don't ever believe that just because it's down, you can't get rid of it, it can go down more. And you should have had a stop loss. Or you should have known what you were gonna do if it dropped. I always use log. I always use log. I think the, the percentage change in a price is much more important than the fixed amount. Like. You should not see something represented. A move from 4,000 to 5,000 in Bitcoin is a 25% move, right? A move from 49,000 to 50,000 should be represented different on a chart because it's a tiny move relative to like 2% a little bit, right? Um, if you get a boner while walking towards the wall, your boner can still go halfway to the wall without touching it. And most people here know that because they're virgins and have only gotten halfway closer and closer, never actually gotten there. Um, yeah, I'm just reading some comments here. Didn't know that we'd go the boners halfway to a wall. Uh, I'm reading the book. Um, God damn it. My brain, brain man. Um, brain's not working too good. Uh, the Price of Tomorrow. Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth. I'm reading it again. And, um, you know, he talks about the exponential growth and how it's hard for our minds to, to you know, process exponential growth. Kind of like you can always get halfway towards the wall. If you fold a piece of paper in half 50 times, do you guys know the answer to this? If you fold a piece of paper in half 50 times, how big will it be how long and we're not talking about boners the answer is long enough to stretch from earth to the sun to the sun sun what sun not earth to moon earth to sun sun to the sun to the sun 
sounds like a personal problem that you were thirsty for my milkshake, which coincidentally I have been told uh, brings all of the boys to the yard, my milkshake. Um, from, from here to the sun. So ex and people have a very hard time understanding uh, exponential growth. And that's why it's so important to earn interest and compound your gains. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. They're like, uh, yeah, you can only fold it seven times and then it's like not even huge. But after that, if you could, you'd get to the sun. Seems like instead of building spaceships, we would just figure out how to fold paper more and climb it. What an idiot. Um, the, don't you think it would be a good idea to start recommending averaging into positions when things drop by 50 cents and condoning long-term investing and holding? Yes, and that's what I do, Jordan. Jordan. That's this. So guys, yeah, you have to understand, I, you don't hear everything that I say here but you only hear what I say today. I am a huge fan of dollar cost averaging and buying dips. And anyone who's following me knows that I filled every order I had in the world between 50, I bought it, but 50, all the way down to 30. And I'm dollar cost averaging into ETH using Roundups on Roundly X and Invest Voyager every single day of my life and always have been. I have not stopped buying, but I'm not really that interested yet because when you think about altcoins right now, if Bitcoin rips up, as we saw over the last few days, all coins have suffered. If Bitcoin dumps, all coins will suffer. So like what's really the like, I'm not saying alts can't do well here. Bitcoin could just go sideways. But, you know, there's more situations where all coins look bad than good right now. So like call me in two weeks if it dumps, you know. Um, these, the, no chart looks like shit if you zoom out far enough, probably. Right. So I, I agree with that. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, can you pump Bitcoin peas? Market is a bit boring. It is boring. It is boring. Let's make paper planes and tell on to go to the moon. Total energy saving. Yeah. I mean, we're still having an energy. I mean, we're literally having an energy debate with Elizabeth Warren and Elon Musk and all these, I mean, I don't, whatever, all these people. As in El Salvador, we literally can see like a well of like water vapor that costs nothing and is completely renewable and clean that would be enough to power every miner in the world, like blowing out of the ground in 24 hours. It's so stupid. Uh, opinion on long-term investment in alts. It has to be the right alt and you got to be willing to suffer a lot of pain. That's all I can say. Sitting sideways, boys in the days. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like if you're averaging into opinion at a position in a coin that you think will be around in 10 years, have at it. But like you got to be able to be willing to like keep doing it when it goes, if it goes down 50% more, because it could. Got Paul Wall and like Mike Jones up in here. Um, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. What do you think of Woo Trade? I met with them ages ago. I was actually going to invest in the platform and for some reason I did not. And but they're cool. They are cool. They are cool. Um, looking at a couple more comments here, and then I'm going to probably like, you know, freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have me some fun. I'm getting it in this weekend. And by getting it in, I mean probably like going in a pool with my two, my kids. Probably. I already looked at ADA. It's a cool project. The chart looks bad, but whatever. I'm down to go half on a volcano, bro. I'm down to go half on a volcano. Maybe we could like start a volcano fund. Um, we could do that. Um, just looking at a few more questions, then I'm going to get out. Of Unfortunately, there are a lot of boys in this yard. If you went to Miami, you would know that we collectively are about 95% boys in this yard, this community. And my milkshake just brought them all to the yard. All of them. Steve Dufour would like you to know that I'm cringe. Steve, you are due for an attitude adjustment. Um, and otherwise, volcano surfing, I would do that. Um, what are you due for? 
I don't know. What do you do for favorite beer lately is a local beer is a local beer from Gainesville, Florida. It's an IPA first magnitude 72. I dig that a lot. Dig that a lot. No Miami hate. Who said Miami hate? I don't hate Miami. I love Miami. I lived in Miami for years. I'm a Floridian dude. I love Miami, but like this particular convention was, it was, I mean, like I almost would have wanted to wear a mask at this convention just because of like people's breath because they were so close to each other and a lot of breathing, like whatever, you know, dude, you got to ask the question. If you're going to say last question, you have to ask the question, Kev. Got to ask the question. I know nothing about ICP except for that all of a sudden it was like a top 12 market cap coin. Which team you're backing for the Euro? I don't care, man. USA. USA. I love soccer. You call it football. I played my whole life, but like I never really got into a team. Yeah, like a lot of heavy mouth breathing in Miami. Like I generally don't want people like having their, their faces like in and around my face so it's like whatever um this is not the way a wolf behaves name change yes i'm naming it to you're in timeout um did i put the wrong person in timeout i think i did sorry i put a stranger i put someone in timeout you're not really in timeout somebody went into timeout it was it was an accident whom did i meet there in miami everyone hung out with peter mccormick a lot uh mark yusko is the awesome um, I don't know, man. It was a lot of people, pretty much everyone. I mean, I didn't, I didn't kick it too much with the, um, Anon crowd as much as some of those dudes are my friends. I, I, you know, I got canceled by crypto Twitter recently. So yeah, whatever. I talked to people that were like with their faces and stuff. Um, Emmy Melker wants to know if you own any Algorand. I have a little bit, I have a little bit, got a little bit. Yeah. So much breathing, like, but like, not like. Not like keep it to yourself kind of breathing, more like the, hey, bro, are you that wolf guy? That was terrible. Was terrible. Terrible. So much disgusting breathing. Like I have a cold. I had a cold when I went, but like I got a cold. Uh, any uncomfortable moments with the CT haters? No. Everybody was actually nice to my face, as you would expect. And that's what you, what happens when people go to these conferences, like they're mean on the internet and then they meet in person and like, let me buy you a beer, bro. You know, and it's fine. Um, but no, I did not have any uncomfortable moments, but I also had private security. Um, I was with my friend, Frank, who played uh, professional basketball, who's like six, six. And I was with two of Mike Tyson's security guards who are his friends, like most of the time. So I had a goon squad of epic proportions, just like, yeah. But listen, I, it was, I did not have a single negative interaction. I got some weird side eye, definitely. And like every time I got in an elevator anywhere, someone was like, is that, are you? And I was like, yeah, cool. And I didn't know if they like hated me. And I'm like, I'm in an elevator and you're like this far away and maybe you hate me. But um, yeah, I rolled pretty deep and I always do when I go to anything crypto related. Um, and you, you would not believe how much security there was in general at these conventions, but anyone who's like doxxed like myself and has had any sort of conflict, which is whatever, all, all low-key had private security. You have to, you have to. Oh, Emmy says we have things to do. Love you guys. I hope you had fun. Enjoy your weekend. Charts look like crap. They generally do all weekend. It is what it is. But until I see y'all next time, have a good weekend. Peace. Let's go.